How is it going on everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you four different techniques that I use when I'm creating my kind of abstract assets slash elements that I've been using in my designs. Um, a lot of these techniques are on Adobe Illustrator, so if you've not got access to it, it's going to be a bit tricky to, to kind of replicate these. But if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, then you should really have access to all of Adobe's programs and you should have Illustrator included. But if you've not got it yet, definitely consider purchasing this um, subscription, not really the program, as you're going to be paying monthly as, you know, the, the vector-based stuff that you can create on this are amazing. And you can scale them to size without getting kind of any pixelation at all. And you can reuse them for whatever designs that you're going to be creating. But before we get started with the techniques, I would really appreciate it if you guys dropped a like and obviously subscribed as it helps my channel to grow. But let's get into it. So if we move on to the first couple of techniques, I've just set up a few quick examples, essentially, as I'm going to be covering three techniques on Adobe Illustrator and one technique, which is actually using a paid plugin on Adobe Photoshop. But again, it's a really, really good purchase and it's a worthy investment. So definitely um, have a think about investing a little bit of money in it when I get into it. But yeah, let's start off with this envelope distort. So as you can see as the example here, I've just set up a quick basically just text example, which is great as this is a live object essentially. So when you move this text, it distorts it to match the container, uh, which is great. And obviously then you can kind of change the text to whatever you want and it kind of keeps this shape. So getting started, essentially what you're going to do, it's very, very random, but it's a very quick and easy uh, effect to use as I've used it on. If you can see on my uh, Luminium Al piece that I did actually do a deconstructed video on and it helped me to create all of these abstract shapes in the background um well I, I made them using this technique and a few blurs on photoshop but yeah so essentially what you're going to do uh, to get a similar effect to this you're just literally going to create quite a few random shapes like so and now that you've got them basically try and have a shape in mind overall but you can just kind of go to town with this and then what you're going to do is we are going to get the Pathfinder tool, which is actually missing on my tab for some reason. I don't really know why this is hiding from me. Properties, there we go. So Pathfinder, uh, you're basically just going to click to unite. So you want all of these shapes to be one large object. You can't have them a separate object. So now that you've got this shape, you're going to create a text layer. I'm just going to duplicate this layer. Uh, and just basically write in, let's say, test and enlarge it kind of to match the size of this. And you're going to make sure that this, um, the object layer is actually right at the front. So you can just arrange, bring to front. You can obviously use the shortcuts if you want, but you're going to make sure that this object is right at the top. So now select both of these. You want to go into object. Then you want to go into envelope distort and make with top object and then you basically get the effect and as you can see when you double click into it you can um, update the live text and let's just show you what obviously the moving around does again as you can see on the previous example that was actually quite cool it morphs the um the text to kind of match the container size so you can honestly create whatever you want with this it creates some really really cool effects and then you can import that into photoshop like i did with my recent piece add a few blurs play around with kind of how it's cropped in the piece and you can create some very very cool abstract shapes of it so now moving on to effect number two which is a 3d effect and again as you can see i've just created this quick 3d shield effect kind of to replicate what i did with my Burnley uh, rebrand that I did last year. So if we just go in and I can show you this very, very quickly, all of these shapes in the background are essentially just shield shapes that I created on, um, on Illustrator and basically just cropped them to size, uh, decreased them. And as you can see, if I just make this slightly smaller, this is literally what the shape is. It's a, a rounded shield with a twist effect added onto it on, uh, on Illustrator. But Again, you know, you can kind of go to town with this. You can create whatever you want. Um, but quickly, basically what you do on Illustrator, you create the shape that you want. In this case, we're going to just stick with the shield. And ideally for this, I don't really like working with dark colors as you can't really see the 3D effect that much. So let's just create kind of like a pale, lighter red. Um, let's switch into black and white. But yeah, let's go with a pale red. 
There we go. And then you're going to get the 3D tab here, 3D materials, and you want to do extrude. So straight away, you've got this kind of asymmetric, uh, quite a thin effect. But what you want to do, play around with the depth, which obviously changes how thick this shape is. You want to get it for this effect that I'm going to replicate, probably around 50 should be okay. And then you can, again, play around with taper. So obviously tapers it off towards the end. So maybe let's use like... 70 i think that'd be pretty cool and then you can do the twist so when you play around with this it creates basically just a twist of the shape kind of coming towards the back from the front so let's do something like this and now using this little rotate tool you can kind of position it how you want it to show a bit of the background it's exactly what i did for this so again it's very very cool you can play around with this whatever kind of way you want even like that, it still looks pretty cool. You can add a bevel into it. So again, you can play around with the front of this. You can play around with the height. So again, you can add more depth into it if you want. And you can also repeat this bevel as well to create an even more cool effects. And then to take it even further, you've got materials as well in here. So you can kind of change whatever shape and color you want these to look like. You can improve the resolution of this color, everything on here. It's, it's quite in depth if you get really into it, but if you create kind of quick shapes, it is pretty easy. And then also lighting is quite important on this. You can play around with the lighting and you can get the different um, areas and shadows to pop. Uh, and again, even just by doing this, you can create very, very different um, effects and create assets that you can potentially use in your work. And also always remember, use ray tracing if you can and also change the quality to height and reduce noise and also render as vector as well because then that means when you import it into Photoshop, it will keep it as a vector-based object rather than a pixel-based. But yeah, that's kind of shield covered. Now moving on to the third effect that I use in Illustrator, which is the transform effect. Again, a quick example of this is what I've done with the Chelsea Lion here. It's very, very easy. And just to kind of show you an example of what I did, this is what I used for the uh, the Chelsea line on the kind of the borders of my Mudrick design recently. So essentially what this is, you've got your shape. Let's just duplicate it here. You want to go into effect. You want to go and distort, transform and transform. You're going to get this little pop-up window. And let's say we will make four copies of this. So it will create four copies of this exact object and keep this one where it is essentially. Uh, and then what you can kind of play around is with the movement of this. So as you can see, horizontal, you're going to get it to move horizontally as well. Um, you can, in fact, change this even so it's more than the actual like slider. So I'll change it to 70 so it moves it even more. Vertical, obviously, you can play around with this. And what I like to do, let's say if we get it to move just slightly and let's hide. Well, we can't hide that at the minute, but... What I like to do is play around with the scale as well. So you can see the horizontal and the vertical scale distorts the actual object itself as well. So what I kind of like to do when I'm creating a similar effect to this, probably do it something like this. So the vertical scale is slightly less than the horizontal. And now the magic happens is when you add the kind of angle rotate effect onto it. So you can really do whatever you want with this as well you can change kind of the anchor point of where the actual transform effect is from. So again, just by doing this, you can get cool effects. Again, reflect X and Y as well. You can really get some mad, mad shapes and mad abstract patterns from this. Um, but yeah, let's leave this at that. And yeah, basically, essentially what I did um, is after you're kind of happy with the transform effect, you want to go into object and you want to expand the appearance. So then it's all kind of not editable essentially. And now you've got this kind of composition. So I do just copy it. And just to kind of show you when you've got a smart object, I basically just scaled this up essentially and um, brought it into the edges of the design and kind of just laid it around uh, until I was happy with the composition. And this again, you can kind of go to town with this, create whatever you want uh, until you're happy with it. And it just adds something extra to your compositions. But now, and that's pretty much it for the three Adobe Illustrator ones. And now moving on to the paid plugin, which you can obviously already see here. Uh, but let's use this cold power example. So the plugin is called Black Market Reactor. Black Market is the the kind of the creator of the company that um, hosts this. And uh, it's a paid plugin for Photoshop. So you will need a Photoshop uh, subscription to be able to access this as it's like a live plugin uh, that goes into Creative Cloud essentially. And you create an account, you log in, you download like an app from the website, it then installs into Photoshop and you've got this little tab here when you've got all these. So the really, really good thing about this is it 
links to Unsplash, which you know I go on about many, many times. It's a great website for free textures and patterns that you can use for your work. And it essentially what the plugin is, it kind of condenses all of the displacement map options that you've got in Photoshop into a much more usable and kind of user-friendly package and it just speeds up the entire process it's very very easy to get some cool techniques whilst doing this and i will basically just show you an example so we've got cole palmer here let's create a light object behind him in a blue let's just make a large um soft shape behind him maybe increase the flow that would probably help and you can then also kind of add a few around the edges. So now this is where the magic happens. So let's say I've got this um, displacement amount that I created myself. What you wanna do is you wanna go into settings, uh, always make sure that you've got blank areas repeat. So then it kind of repeats it to the edge of the object rather than it just kind of goes off only what you've got on here. You can play around with the power of this um, again to kind of obviously emphasize the effect. But what this will do is it will displace these soft objects to match this displacement map. So now when we run it, as you can see straight away, you've already got a very cool pattern. What I have found is that it, this method works a lot better when you're using um, softer objects with not kind of as defined harsh lines, as sometimes it creates a very like jittery blurred edge essentially, which you know in some pieces it might work, but I do quite like this kind of light effect that you create. Uh, again, let's show you a couple more. This displacement map, there you go, it's got some sort of like a, an explosion. I've used this for my Desassi piece, which basically just copies the away kit pattern uh, from Chelsea this season. You've got a few kind of preloaded displacement maps as you kind of get the plugin, but I would recommend going to Unsplash and kind of playing around further. So what you do with this, you want to create, uh, what you want to create? You want to select this little tool here, search Unsplash. So let's say, let's just do pattern. And then this basically links straight to the Unsplash website and it will create a live displacement map for whatever picture you select from here. You know, they've got thousands of different options in here. Uh, let's say this one's pretty cool. Select the power to about 250. Let this run. And there we go. Boom. Straight away, you've got a very, very cool pattern in like seconds. And just to show you what it would look like if the hardness of the brush was set as 100, it wouldn't look anywhere near as cool as what it did before. But I'll just show you. As you can see, it kind of creates a very... Um, not as clean, very kind of grungy effect, which like I said, you know, sometimes this might work for what you're doing, but I do really prefer the uh, the soft brush effect uh, when combining that with displacement map. But yeah, I will leave a link to this website down below for black market and let me just show you what this looks like. This is what it takes you to when you load it in. You wanna go into reactor here and there you go. There's the plugin, you know, it's an amazing displacement map tool. It's so, so easy to use and you can literally create endless um, versions of this. I would recommend getting the um, the XL reactor as it's just a lot better and you can add it to different um, different devices and it's only, you know, $10 more, $39. So when you convert it to pounds, it works out at what, just over 30 quid, which if you're going to be using this for a few years, it's really, really, really good. I've had this for, for quite a long time now and it never lets me down, you know. You can create fresh looks with, you know, click of a button really. So it's very, very handy to use and it's just so, so easy to use. And again, possibilities are endless. But yeah, this kind of concludes the video with the four techniques. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found some things useful. And obviously, like I always say, if you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like as it does massively help me out and also a, uh, leave any kind of video suggestions in the comments below. The next thing that I'm going to be working on is actually the Refine It series in which I'm going to be hopefully getting three Photoshop files from you guys that I will then be working through live and kind of giving live feedback um, and kind of creating like a finalized version of what I would uh, end up with essentially. I'm kind of torn with uh, making this a live series so live stream in the series on youtube or whether it's just going to be a bit of a longer video but i will let you guys know when i decide that but yeah let's not drag this out anymore hope you enjoy the video and i hope to see you all guys in the next one